the Creality Ender 3. It is a printer that is beloved amongst 3D printing newbies and veterans alike because, let's be honest, it does the job and it does it fairly well out of the box. This is a printer that I've had for a few years now and it's been sitting up top on some cabinets I have and doesn't get a lot of love on this channel. But to be frank, it does a really good job. I've got a torture toaster here. I've got this Gyarados Dragon and they do look beautiful. It printed great and I've done absolutely nothing to this printer except add this little light that I did in a YouTube short. So I've decided to spend a little bit of time. I've got some upgrades in the shop that are specifically designed for this machine and I figured, hey, let's apply them. Let's see how they work and uh, let's see if I can get some use out of this little guy. And I, throughout my shop, have printers that I have attached Raspberry Pis to and I have OctoPrint running on because I like to be able to monitor my prints remotely. I like to be able to send prints to them and just get them going and sort of set it and forget it. And so I'd like to do that with my Ender 3 here. Now, as you probably know these days, a Raspberry Pi of any flavor is fairly difficult to get, at least for a decent price. Now, it's becoming easier, and if you pay, know where to pay attention, you can find them, but it is not the easiest thing, and frankly, if you're spending $180 for a printer, uh, maybe the price of a Raspberry Pi, or even the hassle of OctoPrint to install and set up and configure is more than you want to do. So, my friends at Mention, sent over their Beagle camera for me to take a look at. I figured that the Ender 3 was the absolutely best printer for me to take a look at this camera first because, I mean, after all, if any printer is going to be optimized for this camera, it is going to be this one because, I mean, there are more Ender 3s out there than probably any other printer on the market. So let me take my Mention Beagle out of the box here we're going to take a look and see what it comes with, see how easy it is to set up, and I'm just going to give you just kind of a man on the street view of how this works, how easy it is to set up, and I'm going to take these two prints here and see what they look like in comparison to the two I've already got here on the table. So let's get started. Let me bring you in close here, take a look at the unboxing do all the firmware upgrades, the plugging ins and everything, and we will get going. So if you're new here, you wandered in, you don't know what's going on. Well, first of all, this is 3D printing. I'm Chris, this is Curzy Fabrications, and today I'm taking a look at the Mention Beagle camera. Let's get going. Alright, so let's get these guys out of the way and get started. And as you may notice, I have actually not unboxed this at all. As you can see, it comes with a nice instruction manual. I'm sure that this will get us going. Next up is the Beagle itself. And you have to admit, it's a very cute design for a camera here. Looks like a Beagle just as they promised. Remove a little bit of plastic here. Isn't that nice? There is a bit of mounting hardware on the bottom, so you could, I guess, attach it to a table or all sorts of things. Uh, as others have pointed out, they may have reviewed this before me, it doesn't have any sort of mounting for like a tripod or anything, which is a bit disappointing, but the 3D printing community has you covered, and there are some add-ons there that you can 3D print yourself. As you can see on the back here, we have a Wi-Fi connection, we have a printer connection, and we have a USB slot. And that is pretty much it for that camera. Under the bottom here, we also have, looky there, they actually include a power adapter, which let's be honest, so many things will be USB powered, but they'll just leave this out and expect you to find your own. So good on them for including that. They've got a little SIM puller there. So apparently there's something on here that you can pull out. Yeah, look at there. There's a little SD card in the side. I assume that's what this is for. 
All right. Next up, we've got a USB cable that will go to a micro USB, and we also have a USB cable that will go to USB-C. Now, obviously, they don't have the mini USB, so if that's what you need, hopefully it came with your printer, but otherwise, you should be covered here. So I think it is time to look at the manual. Let me read over that real quick uh, off camera because reading is boring. And let me take a look at it, see what our next steps are. And then I will get right to it. My guess is we're gonna be on the cell phone setting this up, but let's see where we're going next. So I have been through the instruction manual and everything seems very straightforward. So what we're gonna do first is just kind of follow along here. Got a USB, I'm gonna plug that in over here. One thing I like about this one, it is only like one slot wide. So it fits in there, even though I have a ton of other things installed aha so that is what the USB-C one is for and let's go ahead and plug that into our mention to the beagle all right we've got some LEDs going on there on the back yep all right now we're doing that now I think my guess is due to my orientation here I'm going to have to have this on this side and I might be turning my printer a little bit to deal with it anyway camera is ready for AP configuration do you hear that hopefully you did it said camera is ready for AP configuration so AP being access point I think that means it's ready for some Wi-Fi action so let's go ahead um, we're supposed to go ahead and plug it into the printer too now I think I'm gonna need another cable so this one is for micro USB as I said, my camera has a mini USB, which is the one that came before that. This one that came with one of my printers is probably not long enough. So I guess that's what I'm going to do first. I'll be right back. All right, mini USB cable acquired. And I have to admit, this is a rather nice one that I had. It is a nice braided cable. I'm sure that I bought off of Amazon, link in the description if I can find it. So let's go ahead. It said that this was step two, so I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna take the USB-A end, which is the square end. We're gonna plug that end into the camera. Um, let's go ahead and turn the printer on first. And then this is gonna plug in right over here. And now it says it is time to download the app. Uh, it's got a little, QR code here, so I'm gonna try it first. There it goes. See if that takes me to the Play Store. Google Play download, there's a link. And it says Beagle Print. Let's go ahead and install that. And I am ready to open up. So, it has instructions, but I wanna see if I can follow along. Uh, I need to sign up for an account there doesn't seem to be an option of, I don't have an account. So this does require an account to log into. It's going to need to associate this with you. Hopefully that's just a security feature. Uh, so I'm gonna say sign up. So I'm gonna get the code. I assume that's going to send it to me via email. So let me get that through and then we will be to the actual camera setup. Create account. Okay, now I'm ready to log in. Yes, we're gonna give it access to the drive. Obviously, it needs to be able to save videos and other things that we capture. Now it says we need to give it information. It is a 2.4 gigahertz device, which is fine on my network. So let's get that set up. Let's go ahead and do an AP configuration. Yes, I heard the device while using the app. All right, next. Connect mobile phone to the camera hotspot. Go to settings interface. There's the BG camera. And I think it said the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, something like that. And we're gonna connect. Make sure we're connected after it obtains an IP address. Connected, awesome. I'm gonna switch back over, say yes, we've connected. And say next. A few moments later. See if it can do it this time. Tap for options. This network has no error. Stay connected. Yes, please. Maybe that's all it was. Let's find out. 
Wi-Fi configuration is set up, waiting for the camera to connect to Wi-Fi. Okay, maybe that's what it was. It was an Android the issue. To the there it goes. It just said successfully connected to the Wi-Fi. And it says the printer's disconnected, but that's okay. I haven't said anything up yet. Maybe we need to connect to a printer. Hey, looky there. Boom, here I am. Oh, look. Okay. By the way, this is uh, a 1080p camera. Should look pretty good. Particularly if what you're doing with this is social media posting, that kind of thing, 1080p is going to be great. Um, let's go ahead. Let's go through the basic setup. I do have my instructions here. Now it says to connect. So I'm going to say connect. Should connect to the printer. Okay. That's it. Yeah. It does say connected. Fan freaking tastic. Now I haven't done any sort of printer configuration or anything. So let me go through that part. See if there's settings here. Wi Fi settings are set up. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. One thing I want to do, and they definitely recommend from the factory, let me make sure that I can update my firmware. So let's find out where that's at. Is that here? Well, I'd already figured out my printer brand. That's nice. Creality, Ender 3 Pro V2. Knows the print bed sign, knows the bot rate. That's really nice that it did some auto detection there for me. Um, but like I said, I really want to make sure that I am running the latest firmware. That does not sound like the latest. I'm gonna find out though. All right, so I guess I'm gonna take a minute here, figure out how to do the firmware upgrade, and I'll be right back to you, tell you how I did all of that. Like I said, anytime you're dealing with any embedded device, any small device like this, it's nice to upgrade the firmware first to make sure you're getting the latest bug fixes and the latest set of features. So I was able to figure out the firmware thing by going to their website. I found out that you need to go to their website, download the bin file, and put it on the SD card that comes with the camera. So that's what I've done here. Uh, I'll link to that in the description, of course, so that you can find it easier than I did. So uh, first thing I need to do, unplug the power. Let me go ahead and plug this SD card, which I've already put the firmware on, back into the camera. And theoretically, when I plug this in, it will flash itself. And when I go back to the app, that I will see that it has actually done that upgrade. I think I'm actually connected. That's fantastic. It even knows when it's upgrading. So it actually just told me the camera is upgrading. It will restart in one minute. Please wait while it is upgrading. I love the fact that they have integrated the voice response. There's no question about what's going on with the camera. It tells you when to connect via AP, tells you when it's performing the upgraded. I think they've gone out of their way to make this user friendly. And that's how I decided to make this video um, and honestly, I'm, I'm really impressed. Uh, I don't think, I'm going to double check in here, but I don't think that they included anything about upgrading the firmware. That seems to be the only thing they've actually missed here. I really wish that the firmware was a OTA upgrade, meaning over the air upgrade. I wish that it happened through the app, kind of like what I saw on the focus printer and the app where it would just download and upgrade over the app. Um, but we don't have that here. It does have to be over the SD card. It's not a big deal. Uh, hopefully, once you get it up and running, if you're not having any problems, you're not going to have to regularly upgrade that firmware. I'm hearing it rebooting because I hear the lens clicking back and forth. That's probably the IR cut filter, by the way. It does have an IR cut, so you can record at night in IR mode, or you can record during the day in regular color mode. Successfully connected to the Wi-Fi. And it told me that it's back up. I just love that. I really, really do. There it goes. And it's reconnected to the printer. And I can see myself again. Look at there. Um, I'm going to go through the settings here one time. Uh, if I go to the firmware upgrade, it knows that it's 112. I think maybe they've added OTA upgrade because this firmware upgrade setting was not here previously. So I'll have to check that out. It does look like they may have added the OTA upgrade right there, but it does say that I'm at the latest, which is great. Uh, there's the storage on the card. It looks like it's a 32 gigabyte card that comes with it and you can format it, but mine's working. 
Here are the recording settings, normal record. The camera will, rec the camera will be recorded automatically when it's powered up. Time-lapse settings, so time-lapse functions on. I can set the Kodak to either H.264 or MJPEG. I'm going to leave it on H.264 because that works for me. Frames per second, I can set 15. Sounds like a good default. Uh, minimal intervals, five seconds, sounds good. I'm going to leave the settings pretty much default because, again, Ender 3 here, this should just work. Uh, let's see, I'm going to kind of go through here. Time zone... There it is, I passed it. We can auto synchronize time, which I love that feature because setting times are ridiculous in the internet age. Came in a night version, color night version, which is worth an IR LED or the black and white. I'm gonna go with the color night. That sounds better than the black and white. We'll see how it turns out. I don't know how much I'm gonna do a night recording. Maybe I'll play with it, but overall we'll just see. So I think we're pretty set here. What can we do? So this is just information. It tells us which layer we're on, how high we are, whether the fans are on, cameras on, that kind of thing. Uh, we have temperatures, which right now our temperatures are not set. We can move. So let me go ahead. You can see it here because I'm on this camera. I should be able to set it this way so we can see the printer. I have to admit, Cable's a little short given it's going to have to go all the way to a power supply and the base is kind of wiggly. So it is obviously not sitting still really well. So I'm going to hold on to it for a minute. So you notice there's an XY home, there's a Z home. Doesn't seem to be a uh, overall home. So let's go ahead and XY home this printer. We see that it is talking to the printer. This is a great first test just to see, is it talking? Let's go ahead and Z home the printer. One more test just to make sure that it is speaking correctly to the machine. Oh, okay, that looks good. And now what we need to do is actually upload our files so that, that we can print from this. I don't have any time lapses yet, obviously. So. I actually have to apparently put the G-code files on my phone, which isn't the most straightforward thing, I think, for most people, because I'm either going to have to upload it to my Google Drive and then re-download it. Um, I'm going to have to put it on like an SD card or a USB card that my phone um, can actually look at. Um, there is a web interface for this, and that may end up being the most convenient way for me to actually upload to this device. I'm gonna play with it here for a minute, check out the web interfaces. There's an easy way for me to tell what this device's IP is. Let me see if there's a way, oh wow, that's not the printer at all. Let me do some setup here because this is obviously not the right machine. I'm gonna go and put that it's an Ender 3 and then we're gonna go through here and select this manually. It's funny because it either detected it or had the default correct the first time. All that's correct, so we're going to save that. All right, so that's better. All right, so is there any way to tell what the IP address of the, of the camera is? Camera information? There's my IP address, folks, right here. So the IP address of the camera is 192.168.1.103 on my network. Let's jump over to the PC and see what that web interface looks like. See if that's the way that I'm actually going to upload my G-code files. All right, so I brought up the Mention Beagle in the web browser, just as I said, and it does bring me into a nice login screen. So, oh, the default account and password of the camera is admin. So not what I put in before. That's just for the cloud. Pay attention. So let's log in. It's showing me what the camera is seeing right now. And it would be showing me all sorts of information, basically what the app has on it. Um, and so it looks pretty much identical. So at this point, go through these. There's time-lapse videos, 2D review, 3D review. Uh, to be honest, this is very, very similar to what you get on an Octoprint. There's not plugins, there's not other stuff, um, but this is very, very similar um, I'm really just still hoping that there's a way for me to 
upload from this interface. Otherwise, I still have to go through the camera or through the cell phone, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So there's the printable files. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to put the two files through this interface because this is very convenient for me. My torture toaster and I have my Gyarados from Hex 3D. I'm going to just upload both of those. It says I can do them both at the same time. That's what I'm going to try to do. Well, it did the torture toaster. It's going to do the other one. Apparently it can only do one at a time. All right, so now they're both uploaded. At this point, I can go to status and control. Looks like I can go ahead and load or print. Honestly, these are very similar even icons that I see uh, from Octoprint. So this is very familiar. Let's go ahead and start with the torture toaster. Why not? It is a test print after all. So we're going to load this and... So now I should actually be able to start this print. Uh, obviously not quite ready to go. I wanted to do this because it was a good way to test it out. It is a good way to see also that the file is loaded. Here's the height. Here's the number of layers. Here's the file size. So everything is loaded correctly. But I do need to go set up this shot. Make sure I'm happy with the way that the shot is framed. Then I can start it from my app. So uh, I'm not actually going to start this print yet. I uh, can go ahead and start probably uh, setting the temperature if I want to. So, for example, if I know that the print is 205, I know as the bed is 60, this should work for starting it off. I do see these peaks here. It does look like it is set and hopefully heading up. So, while that's preheating, let's go ahead back to the garage, get everything set up, and start this time lapse. All right, so it's always fun to try to orient everything correctly, particularly when your camera doesn't really have a good mounting strategy. I am seeing here that it is heating up, it is getting ready to go, but now I need to use the app on the camera to actually set up my shot. What do I want this to look like? Now this is getting hot already, so I need to be careful. Let's go ahead and figure out where my mentioned camera is going to go. Let's get this beagle set up for time lapses. Um, and as you can see, like, the printer's not on the table. So the idea of it just sitting there and recording a time lapse, particularly as light as this thing is, this thing has no weight at all it's just not really going to happen. So at least, like I said, I know why they put the uh, screw holes in the bottom. I guess you're supposed to mount it somewhere, but a tripod mount would have been much more useful. So now I need to figure out. So they've included a box. Maybe we use the box. Let's try that. At least we're using what it came with. May need to take this power cord and shove it underneath a printer here somewhere because otherwise it's going to pull it off the table. Let's put it somewhere, you know, where it's going to get a decent shot and hopefully that will stay put. I'm pretty happy with where that's set. Looks like everything is up to temperature. So let's go back to the control here and da 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 da. We are already on torture toaster. To torture toaster. I'll be able to talk here in a minute. I do want to make sure that the printer and everything is set up correctly. One more time. Creality Ender 3. It is still set up correctly. We're going to go right here. We're going to go torture toaster print. Wow, that was quick. It was already heated up, so it just went straight to it at this point. It is homing the printer. Hopefully all my heights and everything are set correctly. Oh. I just hit the box. Be careful with that when you're trying to get too close to the machine. Because it's going to keep hitting that. Looks like I have everything set up just right. double checking my heights. All right, so I think, you know, everything is set up. Everything should be working nicely. Um, printer's already calibrated, already set up. Same thing I printed this torture toaster with will be printed here. 
and we'll see how it turns out. So uh, this is not a short print. I think this is probably like an 18 hour print given the settings I have. Let's let it go. Take a look at the time lapse. I will see you in about 18 hours. All right, so the torture toaster is done here and it looks really good so far. I'm not actually going to do the evaluation of this print until the very end, uh, but I did want to sort of talk about the transition here. It does look like on the screen here that the printer did what it was supposed to, printed everything correctly. Uh, the only thing that's kind of odd here is that for some reason it says that the printer is disconnected. I don't really know why that would be if everything went to plan. We can go, let me see if I can find the time lapse. The time lapse is on here. Let me see, it says I can download it. It is 23 megabytes, so it seems like it is a decent size of time lapse here, and we can play it. So there is the time lapse, and it's kind of cool. I can see the other printer I was printing with in the background as well. But it looks real clean, and it is super, super smooth looking. But I wanted to make sure that before I started the second test print, that the first test print went well. It does look like everything went to plan. Yep. Looks good. We can now click on that again. I'm going to just reconnect the printer, make sure that all that goes to plan. Don't know again why it disconnected, but it's connected now. So that's complete. Everything worked well. Let's go ahead and start that next test print, which is going to be the uh, dragon over here, the Gyarados dragon. And uh, we'll see how that turns out and then take a look at both of them uh, at the end of the video here. All right, my Gyarados dragon is all done here. And... As you can see, it's a little stringy. In fact, I'm gonna take a moment, show it to you what it looks like on the bed before I even try to remove it because I want you to see how it came off so that you kind of see what's going on. Let me pick up the camera and give you a different angle. All right, so as I mentioned, this is the Gyarados that I just printed. And as you can see, there's a fair amount of stringing uh, it's hard for me to tell what was part of the model and what was because of the fact that every time it was over here, it had to zoom back over this way and actually, you know, take the picture. But you can see there's a lot of stringing here. And I don't believe I had, looking at the original one here, I don't believe I had that much stringing on this one because the points on that headpiece there are far superior. Uh-oh, I'm stuck are far superior to the points that I have on this one here. You can see there's a lot of damage here in terms of extra stringing, extra filament. Uh, so some of this is gonna be caused by zooming back here to take a picture. While it's back here, there's gonna be a little bit of oozing uh, because it's having to wait, so filament is melting. And then it's going to zoom back over here and start again. And so I think we're seeing a little bit of both of those. Uh, but we'll see how much I can get this cleaned up because obviously I did a little cleanup on that other one. So let's be fair. But I did want to show it to you on the bed. So one second and we'll talk about the last print that I'm going to be doing on here. All right. So as I said, I've got one more print to do here. I'm going to pull the Gyarados off of here without disturbing it too much because I do want to do a little bit of cleanup but be able to show you the results of just cleaning it up as compared to the one that was done without the Beagle. So I've got one more print. I want to actually print uh, and test two things. First of all, I'm actually going to test what happens when you print with the Beagle when you're printing a vase mode print. Because to be honest, I don't know what it's going to do. Uh, sometimes the printer will get confused. It won't know what the layer heights are. It won't know when it's switching layers and things go wacky. Uh, it might actually just try to take photos every 0.2 millimeters or whatever, whatever layer size it tries to make up. Um, and it might just 
give up all completely and, and not take any pictures or maybe take them as it's just going. Uh, we'll figure that out in a minute. I don't know how it's going to detect vase mode, but we'll figure that out. The other thing I want to do is after I'm sure that it's printing and that everything's going to plan, uh, I'm actually going to turn out all the lights. This thing does have a night mode printing and I want to see what that looks like. So I'll cut off most, if not all the lights here in the garage and we'll see what those night mode prints look like. So hopefully I will get a vase mode print printed with a time lapse in the dark and uh, that'll kind of wrap everything up at least for my initial testing of this Beagle camera. All right, the rocket ship vase mode print is done. And well, that definitely didn't turn out very well at all. Tons of stringing. And not only that, this isn't really something you're going to want to clean up. There is not just strings, but actually, I don't know what we want to call it, but actual filament hanging off of here. So that was definitely not a good idea to do that on a vase mode print. Um, but I am curious if we can clean this up with some careful settings in their application. So what I've done, I've gone into my slicer, pulled out my settings for my retraction and extrusion, and I put those into the app to see if it makes a difference. So I'm going to rerun this print just as before and see if we get any better results with some better retraction settings. So let me run that and we will show you the results. Well, here we are part of the way through this print. And as you can see, it's really not any better than the last one, even though I changed those settings. Uh, one thing I did notice was I did tell it to stop doing the lift and it's still doing the lift. So I'm going to check the settings in the app one more time on that one. See if that's something I can fix because that's making it take longer than if it just zooms back there and zooms back. So let me see if I can sort that out and uh, give this one more shot. If not, I'll just be back and we'll talk about it. So on that last test print, I did end up contacting Mention on this one because I could not get it to store that zero lift value. And they did tell me that there's currently a bug in the software that they are going to fix and that will be corrected very soon. So as for this test print, well, that's not going to be corrected in this video, but I've seen them release plenty of versions and I think that they'll get that in there pretty soon. As you can see here, this is the end of this video and we are serious and the notebook is out. So let me wrap up this video pretty quickly because I know I've spent a lot of time just showing you the camera, showing you how it works, but I do kind of want to wrap up my final thoughts on it. And overall, I think this is a fantastic product. Number one, it feels a real need of a easy to use, easy to set up, and relatively full featured solution for monitoring your printers remotely, as well as doing time lapses. Now let me talk about each of those features. Number one, the remote monitoring. I am happy to say that I was actually able to use the app while I was out on a weekend shopping and while my printer was going, and I was able to log in, watch my printer, and because it is mentioned because I'm using their app and everything. I didn't have to go through the setup that I would with an Octo print installation. I shouldn't have to worry about security. I don't have to worry about my firewall, that kind of thing. That's all handled from their cloud side and I didn't have to worry about it. It just worked. Now, as for the time lapse, the first thing I want to mention about time lapses is that they are kind of a pain in the butt to get your print to turn out just as well while being time-lapsed as if you just left them alone. And I'll tell you why that is. Because your slicer is doing its very best to optimize every movement, it is trying to make sure you don't have stringing, that you have coasting where you need to have coasting, that you hide seams where you can hide seams. And by doing the time-lapse where every layer you move off, take a picture and then come back, you're actually de-optimizing that process so that you can take pictures. Now there's nothing wrong with that as long as you don't mind cleaning up the wisping or cleaning up a little zit on your print every now and then, then that's fine. 
Um, it's going to be difficult though to optimize that out completely whether you're using the Beagle or whether you're using an OctoPrint installation. So I kind of wanted to get that out of the way because as we can see here on the table, my prints all didn't come out looking as nice as the ones I printed without the Beagle. But again, that's somewhat expected just due to the process of moving away, coming back, and dealing with all of that. Now, this can be optimized. You can spend more time, just like you would for any of your filaments, optimizing this out, figuring out your right retractions, figuring out your right lifts, all of that kind of thing as you're moving away. And they have settings for all of that if you want to continue to play with it. So I encourage you to do that if you get one of these and you're just not happy with the results. Now, that being said, I did come in here and clean up the torture toaster and it toasts and it opens up and it does pretty much everything that the original toaster did. Again, you can clean these up. It's just going to possibly be a little bit more work. I did notice like on my Gyarados here, I wasn't really happy with the quality and you may just find out that there are certain prints you don't want to do time lapses of if you don't have it dialed in correctly because the quality of the print's just not gonna be there. In those cases, what's important to know is that you can still use the Beagle to monitor your prints. Again, I'm really happy with the product. It has a lot of printer support already, and then if you have a printer that it doesn't support, as long as it supports standard G-code commands, particularly if it's based on Marlin, I think you're gonna find out that it's pretty easy to set up. You're gonna take your slicer settings, do a custom printer, put your slicer settings in there, and it should be a relatively easy setup. And as I mentioned, as full featured as it is, and as easy it is to use, I think that the price tags on this product are very reasonable to say the least, if not just inexpensive. So as of filming this video, the cost of this camera is $69.99 direct on the 3D printer accessories.shop website, link in the description. And if you do wanna go through Amazon, there's a small premium there at $79.99 and then you can order directly through Amazon using our Amazon Prime account and they will of course be free shipping if you live in one of those areas that offer such a thing. So you have two options when it comes to ordering these. Again, check out my affiliate links in the description if you're interested in ordering one of these. So as for me, what is going to be my future use of the Beagle camera? Well, to be honest, I don't do a whole lot of time lapses unless I'm preparing something special or working on a specific video. So I don't know if I will actually use it very much for the time lapse feature. I think I will be using it for remote monitoring, which in that case, I don't even have to worry about setting up all of the profiles. I can actually just take the camera, hook it up to whatever printer I want to use it with. Actually, I don't even think I have to hook it up to the printer. I can probably just hook it up to the internet point it at whatever I want to watch and it works as a remote camera. So again, pretty easy to use and that may be how I use it. Uh, obviously I have other cameras I can do something very similar with, but again, this is multi-purpose and I like having things that give me options. So with all that being said, I think that is about it for this video. I would be totally in the wrong by not stepping aside here and mentioning all of my Patreon supporters that make these videos possible, that continue to support me when I'm working on all sorts of side projects and just supporting the community. Uh, as you may or may not know, I am available on most social medias. So if you have questions, if you need to get in touch with me for anything, check me out on the various social media platforms. If you need anything from me, I'm usually pretty easy to get in touch with. And again, these folks over here make that possible through their continued support. So again, I appreciate everyone watching. I hope you enjoyed this long form view of the Beagle camera. I wanted to do something a little bit different here since I know that there have been a ton of just regular reviews on this. Wanted to give you more of a thorough look as you guys tend to get on this channel. So again, if you're new here, I'm Chris. This is Curzy Fabrication. You guys take care of yourselves and I will see you next time.